What's going on guys? Big to be back with another Game Case Arcades video. It's that time of year again. Black Friday sales just went out. I got a lot of Christmas orders coming up. There's just so much to do with so little time. I guess you could say I have a time crisis. <laughs> See what I did there? Time crisis? As if I'm crunched for time. <laughs> Dumb. I know, but seriously, what's going on guys? Big be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we are gonna be checking out the dedicated Pew Pew Shooter Cabinet. Unbelievable, I've discovered these whole YouTube shorts thing. I did one little short and uh, there's been a lot of emails all of a sudden on this cabinet more details wanted everything everybody's going crazy for this cabinet because of the short but again be sure to follow me on instagram at vic underscore vp if you did you would have seen ground up build of this with a little bit more like a sneak peek of you know basically me going in depth more detail than what i usually do on videos because it's the heat of the moment usually in the heat of the moment i talk better um instead of this whole like scripted stuff that i do i mean scripted meaning i'm trying to keep the videos nice and clean and you know on point um, but I don't want to be distracted too much, but definitely a very big, big following, a big kind of, um, what's the word I want to use? A big, like, must know about this cabinet. I got like, no joke, like 30 emails about this cabinet just based off of the YouTube short. So we're going to go in depth on this cabinet. So I'll be going in depth on this. We're going to be looking at the cabinet itself. We're going to be talking about the specific specs that are in this specific cabinet. We're gonna be talking about the customer himself. And then in a separate video, I'm gonna go over game list and basically some like, not pros and cons, but something that I would have done, um, I would have changed basically about this cabinet. You'll also see a video on that right there, a little bit of a decor situation. Um, I'm not gonna to talk too much about it, but basically I had those in storage for a very long time and I said, hey, let's just make some wall decor. So you'll see a video on that. It's a coincidence because I built that and I had this order come in. So again, we'll make a whole separate video on that. But on this one today, we're gonna be focusing on the Pew Pew cabinet. I am saying Pew Pew because I don't know how YouTube guidelines are with, you know, saying a couple of words, especially now in this world. So I'll be referencing it to the Pew Pew cabinet. And I'll be talking about the Pew Pew devices, I guess you could say. I, I, again, now with this whole um, situation in the world, Got to be very careful with what we say and what words are said. So on the cabinet right now, we're looking at a Game Room Solutions 32 inch Pew Pew Strictly Pew Pew cabinet. They do have an option to put two players here. I'll be discussing that later on. I highly suggest you do not put arcade sticks to this cabinet. It's just not comfortable at all. Quick backstory on the customer. Customer is in Atlanta. So this is going to be shipped to Atlanta via freight. Um, customer wanted a time crisis themed cabinet. I messaged Game Room Solutions, I said, hey, do you guys have Time Crisis artwork for this cabinet? Game Room Solutions says, no, we do not. We only have the Time Crisis logo. Comes me now, and I created all of the artwork, as you could see here. I'll go in depth on the artwork later on in the video. Um, but again, customer wanted a Time Crisis theme. Gave him a couple of proofs, he loved this. I, gave, I came up first with the idea of, hey, we need a dual tone, basically double cabinet red and blue just like how real time crisis was where player one was one color and then player two was another so as you can see we got dual team molding red and blue split right down the middle beautifully i really love how this cabinet came out but again real quick just taking a look at the artwork and then we'll go into the actual cabinet details itself so we got this kind of red abstract background cloudy got the two main characters here time crisis one logo on the left side Let's go to the right side real quick, and then we'll look at the middle. Right side here, we got blue, same kind of abstract, but in blue. Time Crisis 2 logo, only because I, I didn't want to put both Time Crisis 1. Um, figure, you know, Time Crisis 2 logo is pretty close to Time Crisis 1. So the characters, though, are the same. Same thing. Nice little abstract background. So left and right, I, I, I love it. The marquee was definitely cool. I wanted to go with this theme of, like, glass shatter. So in Photoshop, I was able to pull all this off. Red, blue, Time Crisis 1 as if it came right through or as if you shot the glass. Uh, bezel on it, same thing. We went with the red and blue kind of broken glass kind of effect. This right here, I'm totally proud of. 
I found an original Time Crisis 1 actual instruction card. PNG, I had to clean up the edging a little bit, but that's just so cool. Again, Time Crisis 1, if you find a Time Crisis 1 cabinet, these are the actual instruction cards on the face of the cabinet. So you can see here like action pedal, release, press. I love it. Then I came up with the button layout here. So Time Crisis got player one action, player two action, and then the four admin buttons. Control deck here was a little tough for me to figure out something. Again, we just wanted the pew pew devices on it. I didn't go with any arcade sticks because I don't suggest arcade buttons on this. But basically, every time I looked up Time Crisis, this quote kept coming up. The latest installment. And again, this quote, I believe, is on the actual Time Crisis 1 arcade cabinet. So I said, you know what? Let me redo it. So that's right there. Very, I guess, very common quote on it. And you do find it a lot on like the PlayStation 1 or 2 back boxes of the actual box of the game you'll see that so customer loved that idea kick plate i definitely love again kept the red and blue glass broke broken kind of setup but i did put all five time crisis logos on it time crisis one two three four and five so time crisis five is the newest installment of time crisis a little difficult to find png files on this but i just this came out amazing again as you could see Artwork totally done by me. And again, if you guys know my history of Game Room Solutions, how they took my other artwork, and I'm not going to discuss it too much. But basically, if you do have this option, if you find this option of Time Crisis on their site, just know that it was my design. Now, Vic, not everybody knows you, Vic. I know. Remember, I learned my lesson the first time. If you look very carefully on the left, the right, even down the middle, you will distinctly, or I should say, you would faintly see my logos, such as... Game Case Arcades and Vic VP. So again, I do it in a way that you really can't see it. That again is just because, you know, Game Resolution screwed me over. They took my artwork. And again, I'm not going to go too far into it. I made a video of it about a year ago. But left and right, you can see it here. Game Case Arcades and Vic VP. Again, you can't see it unless you really look at it. Now that I mentioned it, you could definitely see it. Um, but yes, I learned my lesson the last time. I put it almost everywhere on the kick plate and on the button plate here. So if you look very carefully here, you do have Vic VP here. I don't have a game case. Oh, here it is. I was like, I can't even see it right now. But there's a game case arcades here. Same thing on the kick plate here. Vic VP is at the bottom left right there. And game case arcades. Again, so faint. You can't even see it from far away unless you're really looking at it. Um, again, I told the customer I was going to do that. He said, Vic, no problem. I understand. So again, if Game Room Solutions tries to play this off as their artwork, you could just kind of closely look at it. Unless they do what they did with the Street Fighter and they put the black tape over my names and all that. So again, basic info on the cabinet itself. 32-inch screen on this. Two Pew Pew devices. This is on a PC build. And again, I'm going to go in depth on the whole hardware aspect of it. Just want to show off the cabinet first. Now, as far as a couple of customizing to the cabinet that Game Room Solutions does not give you. First off, we'll start with the LEDs because I dubbed myself the LED King. I love my LEDs. Obviously, you can see what I could do with LEDs. Um, not much like ledging, like my arcade cabinets, like the control panel. There's really no ledge here for any LEDs. Um, so basically, again, you do have the LED marquee. I took an LED strip and I pointed it downward from the speaker grill. So that's like one thing that you could do. But I did cut a notch in the back and I ran LEDs up to point to the ceiling. So this thing does glow. You obviously have the back glow from the vents. But other than that, not much you could really do as far as LEDs. Second thing I had to do, and I do make a note now if you are looking to buy this cabinet, Game Room Solutions shows you and gives you the artwork for these buttons but they only cut out the four buttons here. And on their artwork, they do have two and two. So I did have to take my drill press and I had to make these four buttons here. So just a note on that, if you do go the route of buying the cabinet yourself, these four buttons will not be here. I guess you have to ask for them. Um, I This definitely was here. You could tell spacing and everything was clean. I just basically widened the space here. Um, and then they do have the USB cutout, but um, that's just one thing you should make a note of. The other last thing is this. This specific build, the customer does have the pedal here. As you can see, the pedal. Vic, this pedal is way too close, and I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to talk more about the pedal. 
But basically I made a notch at the bottom of the cabinet and I could pull the USB out from here. Just so clean. Look at that. That is, that is clean. A tiny notch. You can't even see it. That, that's just me. I'm going to, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I'm going to boast on that. VicVP game case arcade. It's custom all day. Little stuff like that. You got to think of it's, it's just, that's what sets me apart. Okay guys, so I'm not gonna lie, this is my second time around making this because I started talking about like what's in this in all straight detail. I'm already at like 20 minutes in just talking about detail and spec. So I'm gonna make a separate video going in depth. On this one, we're gonna just kind of narrow it down and do some gameplay before it ends. So this right here is going out to Sean out in Atlanta. Yes, I'm gonna be freighting this out to Atlanta. Um, couple of key features about this build. This is running a Dell Optiplex. 7010 or 7020, it is a regular standard Dell Optiplex, not a small form factor. This does have a 1030 on it. Again, in a separate video, I'm gonna be discussing pros and cons. Uh, on this, as far as the Pew Pew devices, this is running Gun for IR, Raymond at RPEG Electronics. Gun for IR jolts, so these do have the recoil on them. Again, in a separate video, I'm gonna go in depth with it. And then finally, the biggest thing to mention, it was an accidental collaboration. This is running Retro Lizard Custom Arcade Joel's 182 Pew Pew Games hard drive on it. So I can't take all the credit as far as the games. I'll be making a game list and all that. We're actually helping each other out with it. But this is featuring Joel Retro Lizard Custom Arcade hard drive, just strictly Pew Pew Games. So again, it is a PC build. You do have two gun for IR devices with the jolts. So recoil is on it. And again, Retro Lizards, Custom Arcades, hard drive. Also with RPEG Electronics, Sean did get the, I almost fell, <laughs> Sean did get the pedal on it. So that's awesome. As you see my whole customizing, I could take the pedal, I could simply pull it out and enjoy some time crisis with it. So one thing when I was building the cabinet and I knew he had the pedal, I was like, oh, I kind of want to do it like game, uh, how Time Crisis is. I want to mount the pedal to the cabinet. Good thing I didn't do that because if I mounted the pedal to the cabinet, and I'm pretty sure you're far away, if I put the pedal here, I am too close to the cabinet to enjoy it. So yes, it does look a little weird with the wire coming out, but in all honesty, you being back here, that is the best way to play this. I could even come back, as you can see, I do have the nice wire loom on this. I could come back as, as really as far as I, I would, I would assume I'm like, what, five, six feet away. And it's cool. And again, there's a very long wire going for the pedal. So I could pull this back. Um, on this, I do have a Z313 sound system on it. Controller is right underneath the control deck. You do have to remove the two guns to access it. So if I lift this up, I have my wheel here and simply drop it down. You could also put the headphone jack. There is a little gap on the actual uh, control panel here that you won't crush the wire. But you do have to remove the two devices, I should say, to access the controller. Um, again, 182 games. This is running a launch box front end. You could do big box, but I honestly like the way launch box is because I could go I could pick, let's say, a system. So I could even do, let's say, PlayStation 2, and I could run Time Crisis 2, and I have a enter and an exit button set. It'll launch, give it a couple of seconds. Awesome. Again, launch box front end. I'm a big hyperspin freak, but launch box is very clean, very easy to use on this specific build. Um, again, you could get big box. I don't think you need it, but so far I think it's just, it's just an awesome thing. Biggest thing real quick, we're gonna talk about the pedal real quick. The pedal is cool. Pedal is an awesome feature. It is not needed. If you really think about it, the pedal is only used really for Time Crisis. So Time Crisis 1 arcade, a couple of arcades you could use it as a reload button, but there are two buttons on the actual Pew Pew device itself that you could set to reload or even to set to crouch. So you don't need the pedal. It is definitely a cool novelty to have. It does give you that real vibe. But in my experience, there's only really three or four games that use it. Time Crisis 5 in real life uses two pedals. It just doesn't work with the one pedal because on Time Crisis 5, you have to go left and right. So it's, it's kind of pointless. Right now, PlayStation 2, 
Time Crisis 2, it does utilize the pedal and it's definitely a very cool feature. I do, I'll show off a little bit of it. I believe I have it just muted right now. Yeah. Do it real quick. So now real quick, I have a, a Raymond RPEG Electronics. He does have a very nice switch here that could activate or deactivate the recoil. I had it off while I was shooting that. So if I turn it on and I point to the screen, we have recoil. So again, pedal. It's awesome. One button exit, it's it's just, it's awesome. Again, I, I'm gonna go in separate videos, I'm gonna go in depth on it. I don't wanna take too long on it, because again, you're gonna see in the other video, I, I already spent like 20 minutes just talking about the hard drive itself and the computer and all that. But again, the most anticipated Pew Pew Strictly Only Cabinet Time Crisis going out to Sean in Atlanta. Pew Pew. <laughs> Big VP, Game Case Arcades.